And now we are moving on to our music this morning and our features, Pat Keneally and Rick Cooper, come from 495 North, which was an easy road to travel south here today, I understand. Um, and uh, uh, they come from the area, uh, area of Westford and Pepperell. But uh, they lived in a different part of Massachusetts as children and only a mile apart from each other. Uh, Rick lived in Woburn and Pat lived in Burlington and only a mile apart, uh, but only met each other um, not too many years ago when they began to collaborate as a musician duo. Rick Cooper said that he didn't grow up anywhere, but he lived in Woburn as a child, <laughs> and then loved listening to transistor radios and flying kites and catching frogs. And Pat Keneally, growing up in Burlington, loved to ride her bike and to play hide-and-seek with Barbies and pretend she was in Gilligan's Island show with her friends, which is, uh, that's part of history <laughs> we can remember. Um, Pat works as founder, director, and teacher of a small private preschool and elementary school that she started with her husband in 1984. And in her free time, which there isn't much, uh, she does enjoy making jewelry in addition to her passion of making music. Rick works in landscaping, and he likes to teach firearm safety. He started performing music in high school whereas Pat started a little later in life when she was working at her school and in 2004 was when she started performing. In 2006 she met Rick and they, the duo was started as Cooper and Keneally. They have their own style and uh, in meeting they have merged into an entertaining duo mix of roots, folk, rockabilly, and country blues. And although they focus on roots and blues and challenges of human condition in their song, they also like to have some fun. And the sense of humor that they have is often reflected in their performances together. For instance, uh, one of uh, Rick's favorite moments was uh, when uh, the duo were performing Your Cheatin' Heart. He yelled Stella in the middle of the song. And I'm sure he can do it more justice than I can. but. <laughs> if you know that famous Stella yell. And Pat disclosed, she doesn't mind sharing, she was recently threatened to be reported to the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Toothpaste Tubes. <laughs> and the title of their first CD is Off Our Rockers. So I invite you now to get ready to fall off of your rocker, off of all of our rockers as we get ready to join them. Cooper and Keneally, I'm introducing them. Please help me welcome them up here. Cooper and Keneally. Say 
said you love me, yeah, you swore you'd be true. Well, I was such a fool. And now you left me all alone and blue. Well, darling, how could you be so cruel? So cruel. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. Made me cry. Made me cry. You were untrue. You were untrue. Told a lie. Told a lie. Well, I believed you because I loved you. You made me cry. So cruel. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. Made me cry. Made me cry. You were untrue. You were untrue. You told a lie. Told a lie. Well, I believed. I believed. Yeah. Because I loved you, you made me cry. morning of poetry and stories, just fabulous, and a great intro, Cheryl. You didn't tell him the part about where I got to tickle Goldie Hawn's bare stomach, though. <laughs> There's probably a reason for that, Rick. I have not. <laughs> True story. Okay. Now we've come to say goodbye to a friend 
a summer storm. Cool rain fell so steadily. Sitting on the front stoop, transistor twin ear, trying to sing unchained melody. Yes, trying to sing unchained melody. During World War II, it was quite common for it um, to have dis people would display in windows um, a white banner that had a red border and blue stars. And each star represented a family member that was serving in the armed forces. And uh, my mother and father were young, newly married. My brother had just been born at that time. And um, well, that my grandmother actually had seven stars on her banner. It was her laugh, the way she walked, that caught his eye and stole his heart. His kind and gentle manner endeared him from the start. The 20 miles from Charlestown his old Ford could barely make. They'd picnic down by Willard Brook, go dancing at the lake. A second floor apartment in a great two family house. Some tomatoes in the backyard on sleeping porch, a couch. Working for the railroad, washing cars for steady pay. A call to active duty and a baby on the way. Hang a blue star in the window. Say a prayer, he'll be coming home. Tend the garden early in the morning. Read his letters in the evening when alone. transport Harry Lee he stowed his gear and was shipped out brief visits into Norfolk maybe once or twice a year too few but just enough to keep away a young son's fear hang a blue star in the window say a prayer he'll be coming home son, now a man. Neighbors spilling from their homes, grabbing pots and pans. To bang in joyous revelry, the war was finally won. At last the troops were coming home, a father to his son. Seven brothers in the Navy all returned to family. Gathered in the kitchen, Bell bottoms press so carefully And standing straight and small Amidst those uncles dressed alike Not sure it was his father's hand He took to hold on tight Hang a blue star in the window Say a prayer, they'll all be coming home
Thank you. Ed is going to switch to ukulele. We've been having a lot of fun with this ukulele the last couple of years. Now we'll be somewhat amusing. <laughs> and we have one more song for you, modestly titled The Meaning of Life. Okay. Uh, we should say thank you to Cheryl and thank you, you for all for being yeah. here. Really yes, it's just wonderful. Talking about the meaning of life Talking about philosophy Talking about religion Talking about war and death and strife Along comes my sister Earbuds on her head Sees us looking serious and grim She says, what you doing? What you doing? We tell her we're talking Talking about the meaning of life Meaning of life, she says, well that's easy, just be happy, try not to hurt anyone, and hope you fall in love. She brushes back her hair, strolls out of the room, leaves us sitting staring at the air. She's not a real neat thing, but she might be on to something. I think she might be on to something there. The meaning of life, she said, well, that's easy. Just be happy. Try not to hurt anyone and hope you fall. It's that easy Just be happy Try not to hurt anyone And hope you fall in I was fascinated in history to hear about women doing all sorts of interesting things, you know, going actually in the Civil War, they participated as soldiers because they didn't want to be away from their husbands. So um, I've always been fascinated by pirates, and there's a million stories about women pirates, but um, everybody's written a song about that, so I decided to write a story about modern day pirates, which are rum runners. <laughs> Down the seaside at sunset, just northeast of Barnegat Bay. I could smell the storm hatching up into a squall, making the decks buck and sway. We're not out for dragging this evening. My boat's outfitted that way. We're out for the night, but we're back by first light. With ten times a mariner's pay My daddy taught me about living Trained me on his boat and his trade I grew up working haul outs and drinking the dark stout They serve over in the cafe This boat come to me when my dad died And I wish he were still here today Traditions I pulled on the oilskins and captained the rogue renegade. It's 12 miles out and it's 12 miles back, every league under the gun. Driving all night in the dark without light. 
lights in it till this race is won. It's 12 miles out and it's 12 miles back. My fate's in the dark till I'm done. For the money that's in it, my hold's filled with spirits. I'm running the demon run. Got around with the draggers. The demon run really could pay. But you had to invest, get some power below deck, make for that quick getaway. The crew keeps an eye out for cutters. Cause pirates can happen this way. The drink under a prize and a bet we can vanish fast into the spray it's 12 miles out and it's 12 miles back every league under the gun driving all night in the dark without lights in it till this race is won it's 12 miles out and it's 12 miles back my fate's in the dark till I'm done. For the money that's in it, my old filled with spirits, I'm running the demon run. Time was you could fish for a living and earn a reasonable pay with hard work scratching and clawing, dragging from ocean to bay. But the big company come with their trawlers. They scraped everything up and then ran. Left me with nothing except for rum running. Some things don't turn out like you plan. It's 12 miles out and it's 12 miles back. Gun. Driving all night in the dark without lights In it till this race is won It's 12 miles out and it's 12 miles back My fate's in the dark till I'm done For the money that's in it My hold's filled with spirits I'm running the demon run short poems today. Uh, the first is titled, the second is not. And the first came to me uh, in the early morning, so I entitled it 2 a.m. She poured herself into that cocoa-colored dress, fur at the collar and cuff. It was enough to produce his diabetic twinge. Singed, he approached, faint of frame, asked her name took her hand and led her to the floor to dance. In a trance they spun, having fun, they churned, they burned, and both were undone. Thank you. I love a poem that starts by staring you square in the eye, hands grasping the collar around your throat, pulling you toward its deep heart, then whipping around quicker than sound to slap you right on the back of your head. And just when you think you've got it all figured out, it backs away, slowly, exposing its soft underbelly, letting you stroke it, allowing you to believe that it never meant to cause you any harm. Thank you. Kiss me big boy. In Sarasota, Florida, 
90-year-old Sarah Fisk, thought it would be okay to ask her new neighbor for a little kiss. Her neighbor, Paul Barber, a handsome man of 53, wanted to oblige but thought, she's asking a lot of me. Paul gave her a peck on the cheek, but Sarah said she wanted much more. He replied no to that and got more than he bargained for. If Paul had read his Shakespeare, he would have been forewarned by what the bard tells us about a woman scorned. Sarah did not take rejection lightly, but went home and got her gun. <laughs> Would she use the pepper of Paul's home until the police ended her fun? Fortunately, Paul was not hurt, and the cops took Sarah's gun away. But Paul decided to take no chances and put his house up for sale the next day. Thank you very much.